God only used his servant, Pastor Taiwo Dukoya. I say this with all respect to him, to found the church. Jesus the builder is still awake. And whatsoever he does shall be forever. So this church shall be forever. Oh, I thought somebody saying a loud amen there. I said, this church, as it is with other churches, shall be forever standing strong. Watch it, church. Fresh oil is coming on this church. Fresh grace is coming on this church. Pastor Taiwo finished his work and he left. But the work continues. And the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Bishop David Abiyoye was at the final burial service of Pastor Taiwo Udukoya, where he delivered this wonderful message, describing the life and times of Pastor Taiwo Udukoya, who was the founder and lead pastor of the Fountain of Life Church. He also gave a deep insight into what happens after death. This message will sure be a blessing to you. Watch and be blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we all rise to our feet in honor of Jesus and our beloved pastor? Let us lift up our hands if you can. Give glory to God. If you can, raise your voice a little louder. Just give him the glory due to him. It's a day of celebration. A day of celebration of life. Give him the glory, everybody. Somebody rejoice in the Lord. What a day. What a blessing. What a glory. God's presence is mightily here. Let's honor him. Friend Jesus. Friend. Friend. Everybody sing. Father, we want to thank you for this blessed moment in the celebration of life of your servant, co-liberal, father, pastor, and all the positions he occupied while he was here with us. We give you all the glory for his life in the name of Jesus. And now, O oh Lord, bless us with your word, strengthen our hearts, comfort our souls, give us hope for tomorrow. Let all these and many more blessings be our portion this morning, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Please get seated, get excited everybody. If you can, a big shout to the Lord and a clap unto him as well. Amen. I want to specially count it a privilege this morning before God and before our spiritual father, a great leader of repute across the globe and the person of Bishop Mike Okonkwo and our very dear mother His heart, the assignment given to him by God to oversee our co laborer Pastor Taiwo Dukoya, and the Fountain of Life Church. I want to thank God for how he has stood very firm and strong in encouraging the church. Sir, we feel very proud and we appreciate your leadership. By privilege also, he directed me to share God's word with us this morning. 
and that I don't take lightly. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Seated here also this morning, another general, wonderful leader, and a mentor to many. In the person of Pastor Matthew Ashimolo, we acknowledge your presence. Please permit me to stop at this point um, because I know at some point we'll be having introductions of other dignitaries that are here with us this morning. But before I round it up, I'd like to bring very special goodwill, words of consolation and strength from my spiritual father, the president of Living Faith Church Worldwide, in the person of Bishop David Oepo and his wife, who also endorsed my being here this morning on his behalf. May the church be blessed. Amen. Say loud amen. amen. To the wonderful children of our pastor who just passed on to glory, the Lord will keep you. Amen. He is the keeper of Israel. He never sleeps nor slumber. He will keep all of you. Amen. All family members, the Lord will keep you. Amen. And for the church, no fear. No shaking. Because the church belongs to Jesus. He said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. God can't be building and the gate of hell will rear his head. What more? God only used his servant, Pastor Taiwo Dukoya. I say this with all respect to him. To found the church. Jesus the builder is still awake. And whatsoever he does shall be forever. So this church shall be forever. Oh, I thought somebody saying a loud amen there. I said this church as it is with other churches shall be forever standing strong. Watch it church. Fresh oil is coming on this church. Fresh grace is coming on this church. Pastor Taiwo finished his work and he left. But the work continues. And the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. This church will never know a better yesterday. Another big hand for Jesus. Amen. Now, just as every journey has a start, it also has an end. The starting point of life is birth. That's why we talk about birthday. And the ending point is death. Of course, I don't hear people say death day. But it is real. It's a day. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 2, there is time for everything. A time to be born and a time to die. No one can escape it. Ecclesiastes also chapter 7 verses 1 to 4. You wonder why Solomon said this much. He was in pleasure, affluence, but he realized that one day he had to live. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death is better than the day of one's birth. When one is born, we smile and laugh. When he dies, we cry. Yet the scripture says, the day of death is better than the day of birth. Just like in academic circles, the day of graduation is better than the day of matriculation. Why? Because within the period, so much has been achieved. Came in fresher, now living as graduate and that's what pastor taiwo has experienced he was matriculated into life now he's graduated in glory amen oh i thought someone is excited that he graduated in line with what paul said in second timothy chapter 4 
from verse 5 he said I'm about to give up now I can see something waiting for me from verse 6 please I'm already being poured out as a drink offering I'm about to evaporate from this world and the time of my departure is at hand but the good news is this I have fought a good fight I can picture Pastor Taiwo as I'm speaking right now with a smile nodding his head that I'm saying this I have finished my race because every start of race has an end I have kept the faith did he keep the faith or not may you also keep the faith and in verse 8 I have he said finally there's laid for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous one will deliver to me that day this is important because all of us seated there let no man think that you will extend your time when it comes whether you die young or you die old death is an appointment you have to keep for it is given unto man it's appointed unto man to die only once and after that the judgment hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 8 makes it very clear that when your time comes it doesn't require your view There is no negotiator with death because when it comes, it will dominate you and give you no a chance to negotiate. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 8. No matter how rich you are, no matter how much treasures you have, no one has power over the spirit to retain the spirit, and no one has power in the day of death. No one has the power. What we do when the time comes is to submit ourselves of course before then you prepare your home prepare your work because there will be no return it's a journey of no return there is no probability in death it is certain it is not if it is when we're all on the line just waiting for your turn but not just your turn, but your turn at good old age. Yeah. Somebody saying the loud amen to that. Yeah. So we have a space of time that we live, and that's what we call our lifespan. Lifespan. Which we have to be sensitive to be able to maximize. In Psalm 90, verse 12, David prayed. A tremendous prayer there so teach us to program our days not just counting the number but making the number to count teach us to program to plan to strategize to put in more to invest into our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom the big question to all of us this morning is how wisely are you living if you are not wise you are a fool no third option if you are wise you'll be thoughtful you'll be investing you'll be advising yourself I tell people especially young people who procrastinate who say there is time begin to tell yourself I am behind time I am already behind time that motivates you to work hard and that's what Pastor Taiwo did he planned as if he would live forever but he worked as if he would not see tomorrow that's where the wisdom comes in you don't leave your life to chances teach us to plan to program our wonderful fathers in the faith are here today leaving legacies behind if they were not planning strategizing hard working 
will not be here respecting them today. Every one of us should pick lessons from here today. How wisely am I doing with my time, with my days? I've talked about lifespan. But you see, I want us to also see life beyond your lifespan in two different ways. One, when you are gone, what happens? And when you get to eternity, which is the ultimate destination of your journey, what happens to you there? There are lives that speak after death. Not all who died, died. They still live. We see their fingerprints. We see their footprints. We see things about them that we cannot forget. And so, as scriptures reveals, there are three things I want to quickly show to us before our time expires, which will continue to bring the memory of Pastor Taiwo to us. And I'd like you to please follow. Because we are here today, not just being sober about the incident, but learning from the incidents. Eyes that look are common, eyes that see are few. Ears that hear are common, but ears that perceive are few. Make your eyes this morning a same eye. Go home from here with lessons. He has finished his work. He's gone home. But he left lessons for us to learn. The body is going back to the dust. According to Genesis 2, 7, 3, 19. Dust to dust. The spirit, which is eternal, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, is gone to the one who gave it. The soul still relates around with us here. Now, the scripture recognizes three things that a man can be remembered for. Number one is his name. The name. The name. And I want you to begin to ask yourself questions this morning. What name am I leaving behind? The name of man represents honor and respect. There are names you hear today, everybody stands up, even though he's not there. The name of a person represents his personality, his recognition. That's why the scripture describes the name is as ointment. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 1, we made reference to that earlier. A good name is better than precious ointment. A good name. A good name. And a bad name stinks. A good name smells odor. Now, please, let's look at this. I reasoned some time ago, there are great names around the globe who have died. Great musicians, great artists, Gates sportsmen, but for lack of good character, I've not had people name their children after them. Name is vital. But there are people who you wish you could have more children and give them the name of such individual. Because it's a good name. You either have a good name or a bad name. Sons of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3. His name is as ointment brought forth. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1. The name. A good name. A good name. A good name. The name of a bad man rots according to scripture. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Love and favor than any other thing in life. If you came from a home that values name, they tell you as you are going out, don't spoil the name of the family. 
don't spoil the name of the family number two thing we will always remember based on scriptures concerning pastor Taiwo is character character the character he exhibited morality decency modesty financial integrity good public image not orchestrated by any image but by genuineness of lifestyle today people have replaced character with other measures they paint themselves the way they want the world to see them they do makeup wonderful mothers and sisters here this morning the best time to know you is at night when the makeup is washed up that's when your character shows that's when your true picture is revealed not in the morning going to work you have treated all the contours that makes you look younger that's what we call reputation reputation may be damaged but character cannot because character cannot die character is a person reputation is a, an image pastor Taiwo Odukoya we saw him in his character in his true image even when he was challenged even though behaved as woman but never allowed the character of Jesus in him to go down the integrity of the upright shall uphold him Psalm 26 verse 11 Proverbs chapter 20 verse 7 the character of a man this can be summarized in Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 which unfortunately the church of Jesus is putting at the background today and projecting self-image and reputation love joy peace long-suffering when you have been challenged kindness to all goodness faithfulness in the services you are rendering to God and to mankind gentleness self-control and when you do that no law can work against you how many of us can see the picture of pastor Tai right now in this scripture that's how he lived this life number three thing you'll be remembered for which he will be remembered for is the works the works done the virtues impacted Revelation chapter 14 verse 13 blessed are those who die in the law for their works will keep speaking after them works works that's why I said earlier not who die not all who die are actually dead and forgotten the works left behind those who live to self have limited themselves but those who live for others live forever they live forever the greatest investment you make in life is in people your car cannot testify of you your house cannot write your biography it is people whom you touch people whom you impacted who will keep telling your story in generations to come it's not the fame listen to me it's not your name on the street Jesus name was not on any street but his impact is all over the globe Jesus had no national honor to the extent that he was publicly crucified but people can't forget the impact he made in their lives please think people in the poem read to us this morning we saw the picture of pastor taiwo thinking of people helping drug addicts helping families helping young people how do you think they will forget him 
And you know, your works will always bring up back your face to people. Your works will always bring back your memory. That's why it's a, the memory of the just cannot be forgotten. And that's why, even though Pastor Taiwo has left us, his influence cannot leave us. Which is the reason why virtually everybody was here this morning from far and near. Some of you left your business. On what account? He influenced your life. He impacted you. Influence don't die. Influence don't die. And influence is a function of impact. The cost price of influence is impact. You may not have a good face, but make impact. And people will color your face as beautiful as they can. They will. Impact. Impact makes you relevant even after your death. Again, influence don't die. Jesus' body was laid in the grave after 33 years. But his influence is speaking into millennia till today. Don't forget your name, your character, your works, your influence, your impact. The great sage of the gospel of the 21st century, Dr. Billy Graham, was once asked, what will you think are the three important, most important things to you? He said, number one, character. Number two, character. Number three, character. If you lose money, you have lost nothing. If you lose your health, you have lost something. But if you lose your character, you have lost everything. Take away character. What remains is carcass. What remains is carcass. Take away character. Do you know character is so important that even thieves who stole money want to hire an accountant who has character. So character will always open doors to you. You lose nothing having good character. For righteousness exhausts, but sin is a reproach. Look beautiful. Have plenty of money. They say, Ole. Because that's how you are. That's who you are. No matter how much you decorate yourself. In closing this morning, let's think of the ultimate destination. There is a place called beyond. After your lifespan, there is somewhere you are going to which is called eternity. Eternity. That's where Pastor Taiwo is now. That's where no one of us should plan to miss. Eternity. Eternity. How do you assess eternity? Going back home to your father, where you came from. Number one, you must be born again. No alternative. You must. Nicodemus, highly learned. Jesus said to him, thank you for your accolade. But you must be born again. You must no alternative. You must be born again. The key to eternity is new birth. You don't have it. I don't mean to use any harsh word, but you are going to eternal damnation. That's what Jesus said. That's what the scripture. You either surrender to Jesus or you go to eternal damnation. Whatever you are this morning, please think about it. Soon, you'll be in a coffin. Soon, they will not take you back to your bedroom. Soon, your car will be lying fallow. Soon, you won't find anybody opening any door for you again. It will happen. It's only a matter of time. Think about your life. Where will you spend eternity? As I'm speaking right now, my spirit, the spirit of God is telling me somebody is here who needs to make that decision. You need to make the decision. The wine you used to drink. The man or the woman you used to carry. One day they won't move close to you again. I have not seen any living kissing the death. Where will you spend eternity? Number two, have a testimony of working with God. Develop closer relationship with God. That's why 
Ecclesiastes said, it is better to go to the house of mourning than the house of celebration. He said, because your heart will draw close, that your time is coming. You are getting closer. One day after another, you are getting closer. You are getting closer. Getting closer. Make your decisions very fast. Draw close to God. Because if you don't draw close to him today, you will still meet him one day, but not in the closer range again. Enoch walked with God and he was taken. He was taken. Well, I want to pray. The Spirit of God tells me I must pray for someone here this morning who will make a decision. Never late to make that decision. Pastor Taiwo is with Jesus. Not because he was a pastor, but because he gave his life to Jesus. Salvation is more important than ministry. Destiny is more important than any calling. You are first saved before you are called. Called to salvation before called to ministry. I tell people, I would rather be off ministry and not miss heaven. I want to be there. I want to be where Pastor Taiwo is right now. I love his smile. I want to meet it again. Which represents the smile of Jesus. If you are here this morning and you are not born again, permit me to tell you with all politeness, your coming is wasted. There may be a place for you loving our pastor. But you can't get to where he is. Just like the rich man couldn't get to where Abraham and Lazarus was. Except you are born again. Let me request all of us, please, in honor of Jesus, let's bow our heads. Somebody is saying, Pastor, please pray for me. I understand what you have said. I want to give my life to Jesus. Wherever you are, I want to pray for you. I know the Spirit of God is talking to you now. You can doubt it because you know it in your heart. I want to be born again. I want to give my life to Jesus. Let me ask you to just lift up your right hand so I can pray with you. I don't want to miss this, and I don't want you to miss it. Wherever you are, on the gallery, on the ground floor here, in between, I want to give my life to Jesus. If you raise your hand, please stand to your feet, signifying that you are standing for Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. If you are doing that, God bless you. And if you do, the officials will check on you, share some thoughts with you. Those who may have risen, Pray this prayer with me very simple. Say with me, Lord Jesus, please have mercy on me. I know I'm a sinner. I want to surrender my life to you. I want to be born again. I want to make heaven. I don't want to miss eternity. Give me new life. Give me your joy and peace. Give me your salvation. Write my name in the book of life. And at your second coming, I will not miss heaven. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this morning. Let me ask you to please, everybody, rise to your feet and let's give thanks to God. And I'd like you to pray, Lord, give me the order of testimony with good name, with good character, with good works that I will leave behind when my time is up in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father, and all the saints of God in the house. Please say a loud amen. amen. Give God a big hand, please. And please be seated.